All right. Um, one of the last things that we wanted to hit on for the lesson or in the book was photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Um, photosynthesis, you guys have all heard before, but this is going to, we're going to talk about the chemical reaction in kind of a little bit more detail what's going on. In the next year in ninth grade, you're going to learn about this in even more detail. So photosynthesis, remember, happens in the chloroplast. Chloroplast is an organelle in the um, plant cells, and they're mainly going to be concentrated in the leaf, the leaves, because that's where photosynthesis happens. So basically, photosynthesis is when light energy from the sun is turned into chemical energy. So if you remember our chemical, um, I'm sorry, our energy conversions from FME, light energy um, comes from the sun, and then through this chemical reaction, it's going to turn that energy into a stored chemical energy, a potential energy um, in the glucose molecule. So <clears throat> here's the reaction. So light, you need carbon dioxide, six carbon dioxide molecules. So this six means that there's six of these molecules. The carbon dioxide molecule is one carbon and two oxygens bonded together. That's what that little two means. It means that there's two of these oxygen molecules. And then water, H2O, again, six water molecules, all right? So light will take carbon dioxide, and remember we, plants get that from the air, and water, which they get from the roots, and it converts it into glucose. So this is the molecule for glucose. Um, I don't, I'm not going to make you memorize this at this this type of learning right now. If we were in school, I was going to make you memorize this book. But it's important to know. You're going to need to know it for next year. But it's six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. And they're all bonded together in a ring. And that's glucose. All right? And then it also produces oxygen, which we should know that plants give us oxygen. Okay? So that's photosynthesis that happens in the chloroplast in the leaf of all plants. Cellular respiration also happens in the plant, but this happens in our bodies too, in this organelle called mitochondria. Um, so when I was in school, we would call it mighty mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. Um, and it's called the powerhouse of the cell because it takes sugar, takes that glucose molecule, and it converts it into a usable energy called ATP. Okay, that stands for adenine triphosphate. You don't need to memorize that this year. You're going to learn all about it next year. But basically, it's a it's a like an energy packet that our bodies can quickly use to give us bursts of energy to do our daily activities. And plants need energy too. So plants have to do cellular respiration as well. So they make their own food and some of that sugar they'll store in their body and some of it they'll use to grow or to do other things that they need to do. So the chemical formula for this is the exact opposite of photosynthesis, okay? And you'll read about this in your book. So it starts with the glucose molecule, sugar, and oxygen, six oxygen molecules, right? And it breaks those apart, and it's going to give you six water molecules, six carbon dioxide molecules, and then that energy molecule of ATP. So it breaks down the sugar, and it's going to give water, um, carbon dioxide, and then energy. All right? And this happens in our bodies and as well as the plant. Um, but if you think about in us, when we do cellular respiration, carbon dioxide is a byproduct. Um, so that's going to why we breathe out the carbon dioxide. All right. Oh, I forgot to mention these. So the reactants are the things that start the reaction, and then the products are what the um, are what the reaction makes. So it's similar to math. The product are what is made. The reactants are what go in and start the process. 
All right, so big picture. We always talk about, we've talked about this many times, plants are autotrophs. Autotrophs mean they can make their own food. And they do this by taking in light energy, taking in carbon dioxide, and taking in water through the roots. And then in their leaves, they're going to produce the sugar, and then they release that oxygen. Okay, so they're going to store that sugar in their body. They're going to use some of it um, during cellular respiration so they can grow. All right, and then, then when you go and you eat the plant, you're going to do cellular respiration. All right, so here we have the plants doing photosynthesis. It's given us sugar and oxygen. We eat the plant, all right? We eat that plant or the bunny eats the plant. And in their mitochondria, in their cells, they're going to release that energy. Okay, they're going to get some energy. And then they're going to breathe out the carbon dioxide. Okay, so there we go. Those are those two um, reactions. And that's one of the most important cycles here on Earth is these, um, these two things together. Um, so glucose in our body is just, it's a type of sugar from all types of foods. Um, it's the basis, it's the basic energy molecule. So when you eat food, um, it goes down into your digestive system and then you break it down into these molecular structures. And then this is going to go into your, this is going to go through your bloodstream to your cells. All right. And then your cells will do cellular respiration in the mitochondria to get you that energy. That's why we need to eat food so we can have energy. Um, the last part is plant responses to the environment. Um, this is just different things they do to help them survive. One of them is called phototropism. This one's super easy to remember because you want to think about like taking a photo. If you take a picture of something, all you're doing is capturing the light. So phototropism, just memorize the word photo, is when a plant grows towards the light. Um, so you can see how plants do this. They'll kind of bend towards the light. Um, and you can recreate it in the lab. If you set up an artificial light, the plants kind of go towards it. Geotropism. So this is response to gravity, right? Um, and it's basically that the roots are always going to go down and the shoots are always going to go up. The shoots are the stems and the leaves. So it doesn't matter how you plant your seed. You don't need to worry about making sure your seed is right side up because the roots know that they need to go down and the shoots know that they always need to go up. So here's a little demonstration. If you laid a pot on its side, the plant would eventually turn and, and go upwards and the roots are going to go down. And the last one's called Sigmotropism, this is responding to touch. A lot of plants will need to um, kind of grow and wrap, wrap themselves around something. Um, so they can, they can actually kind of sense when things are there and they need to reach out um, to grab. All right, so I wanted to show you this interactive plants in motion. Um, so this first little video clip right here is demonstrating geotropism. So these are two corn kernels, which are the seeds. So when you eat corn, you're eating seeds. Um, and if you plant them, it doesn't matter any seed. It doesn't matter how you plant it. The roots are going to go down and the shoots are going to go up. So this just shows um, a little video in the soil. Here's the root going down. Even when it's upside down, it's still going to go down, and the shoot instinctively knows to grow upwards. All right. This is also uh, this is demonstrating phototropism. Plants respond to light. So when seedlings start to grow, they have enough energy stored in the seed <clears throat> to begin their growth. But after they come out of the soil, they need sunlight pretty much right away um, to survive. So these ones are given no light so you can see the leaves don't open up and they just keep getting taller and taller kind of searching for the light and they'll eventually die because they're not going to get it so these this is called leggy if you ever try to grow seeds in your house and they look like extra tall 
and they're not very green, um, that's usually an indication that they're not getting a lot, enough light. This is showing you figmotropism. So again, this is sped up, this is time lapse. So if you just were watching this plant, you would not see it doing this because it's, it's doing it very slowly. But you can see when you speed it up, it's kind of neat. It's kind of swinging around, searching for something to wrap around um, because that's how vining plants grow. This is another um, video showing geotropism. So they call it negative geotropism. It's sometimes called gravitropism because it's going against gravity. So the shoot knows to go against gravity. The roots know to go with gravity downwards. And the last one, this is cool. This is showing you phototropism. Some plants will actually close at night and then they open in the morning um, in response to the light. So that's kind of showing you that. Okay, um, all right, I'm gonna move on now. Okay, if everybody's still here, some of you are probably like, all right, Ms. Tubbs, we don't wanna watch plants, that's boring. All right, so this bottom part, you can cross it out. You don't have to worry about writing it down. Um, this spirals back to evolution and um, just survival, survival of the fittest. So plants are adapted to their environment depending on the temperature, the climate, they're gonna have, through natural selection, they're gonna have certain adaptions to help them survive. So in the tundra, some plants actually have little hairs for insulation and the plants are usually really, really small because it's freezing cold and it's harder for them to get energy. So they can't be, um, they need to be small to help kind of conserve their energy. Um, same thing in a coniferous forest, you're gonna see a lot of gymnosperms, all right? So these are the tree, the evergreens, and the needles help conserve water during, um, you know, time, times of when it's really cold and they're not gonna get a, a lot of energy. Deciduous forest, so this is in a seasonable climate when it's gonna be cold certain times of year, the leaves will fall off of the trees and they do this so that they, um, because they don't do photosynthesis in the winter time. So that's why leaves will turn pretty colors in the fall because um, they stop doing photosynthesis to, to save energy. And then so all the leaves will fall off and they kind of, they go dormant for the winter time and just conserve their energy. And then they'll come back in the spring. Grasslands, um, they'll be kind of long and thin because it's really windy. You'll have really bright flowers to attract pollinators because it's such a big open space. Savanna, um, some of the trees on the, the trunks on the trees um, are really, really thick to, to conserve water during periods of drought. And then obviously in the desert, similar, very, very dry, very, very hot. So the plants will have spikes on them um, to protect them from predators. They will spread their roots out um, really wide and shallow so that anytime there's any kind of water, um, they can soak it up right away, all right? And then the last one is rainforest. So in a rainforest, they're competing because there's so many plants. So they're competing with one another. So they have to have lots of adaptions to survive. Um, really, really, really big leaves to compete for sunshine. Um, these are called epiphytes. This is when plants will literally grow on top of other plants. These are called buttress roots. So they have these really big roots um, because it, there's not actually not a lot of nutrients in the soil in a rainforest because there's just so much rain um, and so many, so many plants competing. All right, so that finishes up our notes for plants. Um, please reach out if you have any questions about anything in this uh, Screencastify. Again, I will save these notes in the notes section on Google Classroom as a PDF so that you can go back and review them um, anytime. Um, and I hope you like the activities that um, I put together for you this week. Hope everyone's doing well.